This high-powered offense out of the Cowboys playbook is the perfect scheme for players who want to drop back and sling the rock all game long. This scheme is out of the gun empty cowboy formation and today we're going to be looking at how we can destroy both man and zone coverage out of this aggressive five wide set. Today we were at home taking on Joe Shiesty and the Cincinnati Bengals and my opponent was so intimidated when he saw us that he booted the opening kickoff straight out of bounds. I began the game with the play Y corner and my only adjustments were to put the outside receiver on a streak and put the middle receiver on a slant. My opponent was playing man coverage and Cavante Turpin was able to get some separation and Dak hit him for a cool 10 yard gain. Next I went with the play inside wheels and a quick note is that I'm always flipping my play so that the side with three receiving threats is on the wide side of the field. The adjustments here were to put the tight end on a streak and put the right side slot receiver on a zig but my opponent's man blitz was extremely effective and Dak got hit before he could get the ball out. On second down I went with the play stick and nod because this route from the tight end is extremely effective against man coverage. Dalton Schultz was able to shake his defender with ease and a little click on and aggressive catch ensured that we caught the ball cleanly for a 19 yard gain. On first down I went with the play drive sluggo and I was particularly interested in this sluggo route from CD Lamb. After the snap he didn't quite get the separation that I had hoped for but I threw a high form pass which means I simultaneously threw a high ball and free form pass to put the ball over his outside shoulder and he held on to the contact for our first touchdown of the game. Now on defense, I was running my favorite scheme this year, which is nickel over, and you can find that ebook along with all my other ebooks over at sprucegoose.gg. On the first play of my opponent's drive, I called cover four quarters and showed blitz to move my safeties up, and my opponent decided to take his chances by tossing up a 50-50 ball for Jabbar Chase, but cornerback Anthony Brown snatched it away to put us back on offense. On first and 10, I called the play curl flats, and my my only adjustment was to put the tight end on a slant, but once again my opponent's man blitz came screaming in and Dak got hit almost immediately. On second down, I went back to the play Y corner, but right after the snap, Trey Hendrickson completely dominated left tackle Tyler Smith and it put us in a tough third and 20. With my opponent switching to zone coverage, I went with the play verticals and after the snap, I wanted to read the seam from the middle receiver on the right side and the crosser from the tight end. The crosser pulled the linebacker inside, which left the seemed completely uncovered and Cavante Turpin hauled in the catch and took it 59 yards for our second touchdown of the game. After a rough start, my opponent played it safe on first down with a five yard handoff to Joe Mixon, but on second down, our cover four defense locked him down once again when Trayvon Diggs stepped in front of the Joe Burrow pass for our second forced interception in just three plays. On offense, I returned to the play inside wheels and after the snap, the post route on the right side pulled the outside cornerback in and it left Cavante Turpin been wide open on the wheel route and then he just had to show off his speed to outrun the secondary and give us a three touchdown lead just a few minutes into the game. After getting a perfect gap shoot to bring down Joe Mixon on the first play of my opponent's next drive, I felt like getting more aggressive and started setting the blitz every play. My opponent responded pretty well, first by connecting with Tyler Boyd over the middle for a 12 yard gain and then by hitting Jamar Chase on a slant on the very next play to get the Bengals down to the 33 yard line. A few more complete completions got my opponent inside the 10, but that's when we started to clamp up. On third and goal from the 8 yard line, my opponent's right tackle decided to just take the play off and it allowed Demarcus Lawrence to fly in untouched to sack Joe Burrow and my opponent was forced to settle for a field goal. To start our next drive, I once again went with Y corner and while I could have hit CD Lamb on the in route over the middle, I ended up checking down to Cavante Turpin in the flat and he bolted upfield to turn it into a 17 yard game. Next I went with verticals since my opponent was still in zone coverage and after the snap I decided to hit Noah Brown in the flat for the easy five yard gain. On second down I called inside wheels and this time it would have been a little too sketchy of a throw to try and squeeze it into the wheel route so I connected with Michael Gallup on the in route over the middle and he took it down to the 41 yard line. After that I went back to drive sluggo and was able to dump it down to Cavante Turpin on the drag for a seven yard pickup. Then I went with the same setup as before out of curl flats and before the snap I could see that my opponent had audibled into man coverage. Knowing that my tight end slant should win against man coverage I was able to hit Dalton Schultz over the middle before the blitz came in for a gain of 13 yards. Seeing zone coverage once again I went back to the play verticals and once again the seam was left completely unguarded and Cavante Turpin held on through the contact to get us down to the 7 yard line. After an unsuccessful experiment with the play wide 
receiver screens. On second down, I called the play all hitch, and my adjustments were to put the tight end on a slant, put the right side slot receiver on a slant, and put the left side middle receiver on a flat route. It was good defense from my opponent, and I didn't see CD Lamb late on the hitch, so I ended up taking the sack. On third down, I went back to inside wheels, and just like we saw before, the wheel route was completely uncovered down the sideline, but once again Trey Hendrickson came screaming off the edge and hit Dak before he could get the throw off. With how good that look was, I had to go back to inside wheels again on fourth down, and this time our blocking held up, and Dak was able to laser the ball outside to Kevante Turpin, who hauled in his third receiving touchdown of the first half. Now in the second half, my opponent wasn't going to go down without a fight, and we know that even a 28-3 lead isn't safe in the NFL. My opponent started off by connecting with Joe Mixon over the middle for an 8-yard gain, and a couple plays later, found Tyler Boyd on a crosser to get the Bengals across midfield. A few plays later, on 3rd and 11, I thought I was perfectly guarding the seam with Leighton Van Der Esch, but my opponent somehow was able to squeeze the throw into Tyler Boyd to get it down to the 10-yard line. On the very next play, Burrow connected with Jamar Chase on an easy curl route, and just like that, we now had some pressure to go down and score. To start the fourth quarter, I called the play verticals, but this time I put my middle receiver on a zig route. My opponent had been playing a lot of cover too, and after the snap, I was watching the outside to see if my streak could clear the cornerback in the cloud flat. Despite Michael Gallup getting bumped off his route, Dak was able to laser this throw down the sideline, and Gallup hauled it in, threw a defender off of him, and fought his way all the way down to the 35-yard line. On the next play, I went back to drive Sluggo, but once again, Trey Hendrickson was in the backfield, causing all sorts of trouble. On 3rd and 13, I went to Y corner, but yet another sack had me starting to feel a little nervous as we faced 4th and 22. Hoping my opponent would still be in cover too, I went with 4 streaks and motion blocked the middle receiver in case my opponent blitzed. It turned out to be cover too, and Michael Gallup got open once again along the sideline, but for whatever reason, good accuracy doesn't actually mean good accuracy in Madden 23, and the pass was overthrown for a turnover on downs. While my opponent did put together another drive to move down the field and score a touchdown, it was too little too late since he used up almost the entire fourth quarter. Looking for some insurance points, I connected with Dalton Schultz on verticals, and then two plays later, I once again hit Kevante Turpin to get inside the five-yard line. On our final offensive play, I went with stick and nod, and while Turpin seemingly got a ton of separation, Dak ended up just barely squeezing the ball in there for him to bring in the dagger touchdown. We had an immaculate on the stat sheet, with Dak completing 21 of his 26 throws, which was good for 340 passing yards and 5 touchdowns. We didn't record a single rushing yard, but Kevante Turpin had a fantasy MVP type of day, hauling in 10 catches for 195 yards and 4 touchdowns. So if you want to stand tall with your quarterback and throw for an absurd number of passing yards to 5 different receiving threats, then Gun Empty Cowboy out of the Cowboys playbook just may be the scheme for you. Thanks so much for watching guys, and I'll catch you in the next video for another scheme breakdown.